We're in Pembrokeshire, in the far west of Wales, to meet the Watkinson family. Now, they've lived completely off-grid for two years now, but their place is so remote that we've been told this trusty car won't get up the hills. So, we've been given the directions to a field, and then they're gonna come and pick us up. We are in your field, I think. Matthew and wife Karis both used to be vets until they gave it all up to live here, along with daughter Elsa and son Billy. It's basically junk. <laughs> Talk me through it. So the first thing we got up here was the a horse lorry, an old horse lorry. We, we also have a little camper van which is butted up against it, that's our bedroom. With the family growing, we got two great big huge flatbed trailers and slid them in behind, um, and then wow. have built a little cabin on top. Amazing, and these are all footpaths. Yeah, so That's on the left is a spare bedroom. That is like a full double mattress. <laughs> so this is the shower. And it's cold water. We got hot running water. This is hot water yeah, in yeah, this yeah, outdoor yeah. shower. Yeah, of course. <laughs> We've got a hot tub made out of IC IBC tank. You haven't got a hot tub. We've got a hot tub made out of <laughs> IBC tank. <laughs> <laughs> this is our manual washing machine solution. And then all you do is pull on these ropes. And just rotate it back and forth for 10 minutes. Wales has one of the most progressive policies in the UK when it comes to living off-grid, thanks to the decade-old One Planet Development Scheme. In a nutshell, it allows you to build on agricultural land if you can make enough money to live off it whilst living within your ecological means. So a biodigester essentially means that you are creating gas from your food waste. Exactly. What we've, what we've essentially got is an artificial cow stomach. That is full of the normal bugs that would be in a cow's stomach. Those bugs in there are turning what we feed it into methane. This is work in progress. This oven works on gas from your old food waste. Yes. Yeah. Made a hob out of um, just drilled holes in some copper pipe and the gas is piped into there and we can light that and cook off that. Wee goes one way, so yeah. that's the wee toilet. <laughs> oh, there's a toilet for yeah. number one and number two. So it, that will be filled, filled in about two and a half months, two to three months. And you just leave it? Then we take it outside, leave it for a year, and then it, it composts down into just compost and you put it around the trees. In order to qualify for the One Planet Development Scheme, they have to earn at least £500 a month from the land. The Watkinsons sell eggs from their chickens to local shops. 41. 41. Is that about normal? Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that'll do. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's, that was one of the most liberating things from moving up here, is no, no electricity bills, no gas bills, no water bills. So these are our solar panels. I don't think we've reduced our electricity use that much. We charge our phones, we've got the laptop, got the TV, we have the fridge and the freezer. Two people, both vets, both had careers, choose to give it all up and live here. Why? Everybody's used to a situation where things are available all the time and, um, and we just, Started, it suddenly started to feel less and less secure. So we thought, actually, we'd like to be able to look after ourselves a bit more. But some of the family have more inventive ideas. Coffee Elf is making, I, I think we should live on, on the planet where my dragons live. Oh, that yeah. That sounds sensible to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where we is keep... it? Where is that planet? <laughs> It's just by Africa. Oh, wow. <laughs> just by Africa. <laughs> I'm on my way to the Centre for Alternative Technology. 
This is the place you come if you want to know anything about living in a more environmentally friendly way. And we're not here just to ride this water-powered cliff railway. This week, people from all over the world are coming to the centre to learn how to build their own home in a more environmentally friendly way. And then you connect that to the timber spike. Corwin Jones is the master carpenter who runs the five-day natural house course. What are the environmental benefits of building something like this in this way? compared to traditional building methods? A lot of man-made material, there's a lot of energy going into it. So using natural materials, yeah, just makes it more sustainable. Charlotte is one of the students who hopes to build an off-grid house in the future, but knows it's a big commitment. You've got to weigh out the, like, how much time you're going to put into, like, you know, doing all of that work on a daily mm. basis and maintaining everything. Tim Brewer is an expert in off-grid living. I wanted to ask him how we can achieve this on a mass scale. So in our cities, where the majority of the population lives, how can we realistically work towards a carbon neutral future? Okay, so two major technologies that are appropriate for households generally, solar electric, so PV, photovoltaics, or solar water heating panels. And both of those technologies are really, really mature and they're really, really applicable for 99% of the households in the UK. But in reality, um, if we're going to try and achieve zero carbon Britain or reduce our carbon output significantly, then we need national government policies. We need to be generating large amounts of renewable energy from our renewable resources that we have around the country, wind, solar, wave and that needs to be fed into the national grid so that we can all use that renewable energy. You are to all intents and purposes average members of society. How long do you think before way more people like you start doing this? The leap, you know, handing in your notice and saying that we're off, don't have a job really, you know, lined up and that that's scary. That's a big, that's a big brave move, really. There's loads of people who'd love to do this already. <laughs> but the, it, the planning process is such a barrier that I don't know how many people will end up doing it in time to make a, a, a big difference. The United Nations say we can have as little as 11 years to stop a climate catastrophe. To halt it, we'll take difficult decisions from government hard choices from business and a willingness from us as individuals. But the people we've met have showed that living in an environmentally friendly way can be liberating, not limiting. And if we're to halt a catastrophe, it's a way of life that us as society will have to adopt sooner rather than later.